Christian Freeland goes on TV and all but admits that the GST pause is not for your best interest, but it is a desperate attempt for the Liberals to save the failing economy. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Christy Freeland and a couple other ministers come out and start to talk to the press to try and make everybody get excited over this GST pause, which I have told you from the start is not about giving you a break. It's about giving them a desperate attempt to get you to go shopping again. And Christy Freeland says that. A couple of things they say along the way, though, will shock you. One of the first things that Christy Freeland was asked is about the fact that the GST is not laid out the same across the provinces and many of the provinces use an HST. And how are they going to compensate those provinces that are going to lose all of that additional money, right? Because if you give the HST, that means that the provinces are not taking their, their fair cut. Premiers of PEI New Brunswick say they were very caught off guard by this and it's going to impact their own provincial finances because uh, it means because they're HST, they, they collect less provincial sales tax. Um, it's not clear whether this change triggers this 1% rule, which requires automatic compensation. And Yves Giroux, the parliamentary budget officer, said if that is in fact triggered. Our hope is that as we talk more with premiers of provinces and territories, um, they will recognize that this is a good thing for the people who live in their province and that they will join us. The point that we're making is this is the right thing for Canadians right now. It's the right thing for the Canadian economy right now. So there you have it. She doesn't care that the provinces have different amounts of payments. She just thinks they should all kumbaya, lock arm and arm with her. Who cares about the, the problems that it's going to cause in the budgets that you may have carved out for that provincial sales tax for the hospitals, for the schools, for many of the programs that you've been laying out. I mean, that tax base is, is what's utilized for those kinds of things. I don't worry about it. Come and get on board with the federal government. We will kumbaya the whole thing. And maybe in the end, Canadians will vote for us again. All right, so I went to the Canadian website and I got the numbers, right? We can see that in Alberta, it's a 5% GST. There is no provincial sales tax. In British Columbia, they have a separate sales tax, so this this won't impact them, right? This won't impact their um, their 7% take. Neither will it in Manitoba, but in New Brunswick, in Newfoundland, in Nova Scotia, in Ontario, and in Prince Edward Island, who don't collect any sales tax, they have what the HST, which is called the Harmonized Sales Tax. The government should be reimbursing them the difference, right? 10%. So now, instead of that coming in at the till, it's going to come directly out of the pockets of the Canadian taxpayer. So it's not that Canadians are getting a tax break. They are, in fact, in many of the provinces, being forced to pay 10%. Double what the GST is. The point that uh, the parliamentary budgetary officer is trying to make, that if they go ahead and pay back those provinces, it's going to cost the Canadian population a lot of money. Double what the, province, what the Liberal government would have taken in. You can't, you can't even make it up. Also, it's another thing to point out that every one of these provinces that, that has their own provincial sales tax, an item that is, say, for sale in Alberta will be a 5% discount, but that very same item for sale in, say, Prince Edward Island will be a 15% discount. So now the, provinces, the, the federal government is, again, playing favorites with the provinces. I don't think they have an understanding of what the, oh, I've said it a hundred times, I've said it a lot anyway. The federal government, the current liberal government has no idea how the economy works. They have no idea what they're doing and it's starting to collapse and they're getting desperate. This is their desperate ploy that they have to try and convince you that you need to go shopping. But I'll come to that in a minute here. Now, when the, when the reporter um, cornered her on it, this is how she left that question. The point that we're making is this is the right thing for Canadians right now. It's the right thing for the Canadian economy right now. She says it's the right thing for Canadians and it's the right thing for the economy, right? Because she has no idea what she's doing. She's just being told what to do. She's a journalist. She's not a finance major. She's not an economist. She has no idea what she's doing. None of them do. And there we get a, a sample of it. There she starts to let a little bit of the truth out. That this is not about you. This is not about, it's about the fact that 
every business in the country is running out of money, that the middle class is shrinking to the point where it's non-existent, where the 2% uh, inflation rate is down around a 1% because nobody's buying anything and people are letting things go to fire sale. That's exactly what this whole GST thing is about. And I will show you some of that when I get a little further in, when she all but submits it. And I'll, But first I want to show you more of the the way that she's trying to, to shape this as opposed to the truth. So one of the corporate press decided that they're going to try and press her, push on her a little bit like they've been trying to do lately and try to, I think they're just desperate to hold on to their jobs. And they realized that they backed the wrong horse. And she, the reporter asked her a question of what I was just alluding to, that it's not fair across the country that some people will be getting more money off for the same product than others. Her answer, Christia Freeland's answer, was beyond ridiculous. I'm wondering how you see this me this measure on GST being fair, given that you'll be on the hook to compensate provinces with an HST, but in other provinces that have their own separate sales tax, Canadians will only get a 5% break instead of 15% elsewhere. Um, with um, real respect, um, I disagree with the premise. Um, this is an opportunity for all premiers across the country to step up and to join the federal government. You reject the premise of math? Is that what you mean? Finance Minister Freeland? You reject the concept that if you have more tax in one area than you do in another and you try to remove the tax across the board, that it's, getting, it's an unbalanced and unfair um, attribution to the country. It's an imbalance in this, you know, free and fair democracy, quote unquote. But you reject the premise. You reject the premise of math. Wow, that's a that's an interesting thing for a finance minister to say. Of course, what she really means is ignore that and just get in board in our little um, arm in arm circle of kumbaya, kumbaya, kumbaya course the one thing that they're not going to admit to you is that by doing this in Ontario they can really hurt Doug Ford because that revenue is not going to come into his pocket and that's a lot of revenue in southern Ontario that he could be keeping and you know he's got a lot of projects on the go he's doing a lot of good in Ontario and the liberals are hating it the liberals are losing their minds over it because if they lose southern Ontario and they lose Quebec they're basically going to have like three seats up north you know so they're keeping that out of it right but they, she rejects the premise of mathematics, which I find to be quite staggering. The lack of understanding in that statement coming out of the finance minister. She should just resign and step out of the way. I mean, every, every one of the liberal parties should just resign and get out of the way and let Canadians try to fix this mess that they've caused. So now they go over to Duco there and he's going to tell them all about how the Canadian and, and the Quebecers are feeling about the economy right now. Now they're starting to turn the narrative over to, it's not that it's bad, it's just that people don't trust it. No, Canadian, the average Canadian doesn't yet feel that good news. When we speak to Canadians and Quebecers in particular, they don't feel that yet. They don't feel that yet. They haven't feeling it for years, bud. It's that you didn't listen to them. It's just that now you're starting to understand the gravity, the disaster. And I can promise you, even if you got every Canadian in the country to spend money over this fake and phony pause, you are in no way, shape, or form in a position to save the economy. It is beyond repair in, on your current method or your, on your current trajectory. Christy Freeland is about to say one of the stupidest things I've ever heard as it pertains to the economy. There's no other way to put it. Jean-Yves spoke about uh, the disconnect between the positive news that the numbers are showing about the Canadian economy and what people are feeling. He talked about how Canadians are feeling. Uh, a lot of economists have been talking about the vibe session um, and the fact that Canadians just aren't feeling good and that that is having real economic consequences. So much to unpack in that most absurd statement, right? Vibe session. And she means it in the way of a recession, right? A vibe session. So like I was telling you in other videos that I've done on this ridiculous and con uh, terrible idea. 
it's not that they don't they don't believe that you don't have any money, right? They don't believe that you're not paying, you're like you're robbing from Peter to pay Paul. They don't believe that. No, no, what they believe is that you're just sitting on your money because you're not feeling the vibe of spending it. That's what they think. They think to themselves, no, 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 you are, you're, you're just not in the mood to go shopping. It's not that you're worried about your rent. It's not that you have no money to spend. It's not that you're worried about making sure your groceries are covered. It's not about any of that. It's a vibe session. And if you know a single solitary accountant or economist that uses the word vibe session, you need to stop keep trusting them for math in any way, shape, or form. That is not a real word. And I sit here wondering how much the how many different uh, consultants the liberals had to pay to come up with that ridiculous and asinine concept. People aren't spending money because they don't have any money. And that's not called a vibe session. That is called horrible economic policy and now I'm flat broke session now when the silence fell across the room with that word that nobody's ever heard of because it's not a real word I don't think that she realized that people were just looking at her with shock and dismay so she continued along this ridiculous pathway but Canadians aren't feeling it and that is shaping their economic behavior in ways that are not great for the Canadian economy um, people have been talking about a vibe session and how that is a challenge for the Canadian economy I mean you've heard me mock the fact that vibe session is not a real word but I, I told you and I think August or September that if you stop spending money they will panic because what they didn't count on was you being smart with your money. What they didn't un want to appreciate is that you're flat broke. So when they're telling you that you got, when you're telling them you got no money for rent, that you got no money to pay your phone bill when you got no money, they didn't let, take you seriously. It, because they have no idea how the economy works, here they are now staring down the barrel of a flat out, full on economic collapse because people don't have any money to spend. But in her mind, it's not that you don't have any money to spend. It's that you just don't feel like spending it. Because somehow you feel that you should, you know, go shopping when you have so many other real world financial concerns. The finance minister. But I did tell you that that's what this GST cut is all about. If they were really trying to solve the problem, they wouldn't go after the GST. Well, the hits just keep coming with these guys, and I, uh, I'm going to show you how the final proof here where they're admitting that it's all about the economy and it's got nothing to do with you. It's really important for Canadians to start feeling that confidence and to act on that confidence. Um, we heavily rely on the Christmas holiday season for sales for the year. Um, but one of the challenges is right after the holiday season is over, there's this lull and it almost it feels like a crash come January. These supports are really going to help small business to drive foot traffic into their doors that they never had right after the holiday season. It's a, it's a, everybody knows that January in, in Christian holiday is Christian countries is a hard time for businesses. It doesn't matter what the business is because everybody's paused after not just Christmas, but there's New Year's on top of that. There's a lot of money being spent. There's trips and people are running up credit cards and they're like, you know what? That's it. Um, let's enjoy what we have. I'm done shopping. These liberals don't seem to understand that that is a not going to be affected by a 5% or even a 15% swing. That's simply just not going to happen, right? Because in their head, you're not out of money, right? You're not living paycheck to paycheck. These out of touch liberals don't have a clue what is going on. And they want you to believe that by dropping this 5% or 15%, depending on where you live, you're all of a sudden going to crack open your purse strings, right? You're going to take the cobwebs off, or you're going to dig into your mattress and you're going to find this imaginary money. But you're not because we know that you, the reason that you're doing it is that you don't have any money or, or what you do have, you're not spending on overpriced because it's still not going to affect the inflation, right? Things are still 35, 40% higher than they, than they should be. People don't have the money. People are going to cut down on Christmas. People are going to be like, you know what? Let's just have a nice homemade Christmas this year. We'll make, you know, we'll knit, we'll crochet, we'll do, you know, glue, little glue projects and we will just, you know, enjoy the, the ambiance of the season. 
There won't be any iPhone. The iPhone sales will drop through the floor. And of course, this individual doesn't understand that. She's like, oh no, this is going to drive traffic in. And then all of a sudden, we're going to have this January that has never existed in the economic model of North America or most of Europe. Nobody spends money in January because we don't have that. It, it normally doesn't start up again. Till, why do you think they put Valentine's Day there? The middle of February, they can finally get people to start spending money again in all of the right places, right? All of the same places. Think about it. Stationery and restaurants and frivolous goods. That's what people, flowers, that's chocolates. That's what people do in the middle of February. So they said, oh, let's make this holiday so we can get people to start to spend their money again into the new year. We have to meet Black Friday, which is always about being an economic model, but that's a different video and I don't want to digress. I want you to understand that the Liberal Party just admitted that they don't have any idea what they're doing and that the only reason that they're knocking this GST off is because they're desperate, desperate to get you to spend money, money that you, they don't want to understand that you don't have, right? Because they're, these, these decisions they, that they make are not being impacted by them, right? They write off most of their stuff. You and I pick up the tab for their food. You and I pick up the tab for their dry cleaning. You and I pick up the tab for their car, for their flights. Meanwhile, me and you are robbing from Peter to pay Paul. As Christian Freeland became more and more frustrated with the reporters not taking what she said at face value and pushing back a little bit because of their desperation to save their jobs and their careers, she spits out the truth. She just basically blurts it out. But before I show you that clip, I want to show you something that the um, liberal government could be doing that would actually help us, right? According to many of the experts. So this is a table right off the website, the Canadian, the, you know, Canada.ca. Table one, the fuel charge rates for Alberta, Manitoba, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, Labrador, Nova Scotia, Ontario, PEI, and Saskatchewan. The fuel charge rates is what you and I are calling the carbon tax. And this starts, you know, and now it ends at April 30th. You can see it there and they, they cover all these things, aviation, butte, coke, uh, combustible waste, ethane, and it comes to gasoline. And you can see right there from April 1st, 2024 to March 31st, 2025, they are putting, rounding up, 18 cents a liter on gasoline. Which means, so if you cut the GST, and even if you cut the HST, for every $100 you spend, you're gonna save 15 or five or $15, depending on where you live in the country. If we call it five, dollars for every hundred because the government is going to have to reimburse those provinces that have an HST. Cutting the carbon tax will save 18 cents a dollar, right? So for every hundred dollars you spend, it's going to be 18 bucks. Every hundred dollars you drop on gasoline, you're going to save $18. And not just you, also the people that are transporting the food, also the people that are transporting the clothing, the magazines, all the things that they're trying to put on sale. All of those companies that are transporting that, all of those companies that are manufacturing that, all of those companies that are, are selling those products, all of those companies can now save $18 for every 100 that they spend on fuel. And many of them spend, fuel is their biggest expense. So if you really wanted to hit Canada across the board, if you really wanted to help Canada across the board, if you really wanted to stimulate the economy, does it not make sense that the one thing that literally drives the economy should be as cheap as possible. But they're not, they're not even considering it. They're trying to wave this 5% in front of your face because really it's not about giving you a break. It's about you spending money. And the less money you spend, the more, the quicker we will come to an election. Because these guys don't have a clue what they're doing. And right now, Mark Kearney and all of their advisors are telling them that we are on the brink of a collapse. I can't tell you that that's going to be a good feeling. I can tell you that the government is aware of it and they're getting desperate and they're getting so desperate that they're trying to trick you into shopping. That's why all of the things on those, on those lists are not really essentials. They want to tell you that it's kids clothing and they also want to get you to buy magazines. It's a whole bunch of stuff that people will buy on impulse. But if they were really trying to help us, if they were really trying to get the, the problems off our back, well, they would take, the 18 cents a liter, 18 cents for every $100 we spend, and that's be straightforward. How many times a month are you putting 100 bucks into your car? 
if you drive it to work back and forth to work every day, plus on weekends, I'm sure you're doing it at least two times a month. You're probably doing it every paycheck. You're at least getting one tag. And that's just you. Never mind the truck, the, the, the guy that hauls the freight around all day long or the UPS guy that delivers it all day long. Those trucks are, are consuming enormous amounts of fuel. And for every hundred that they spend, they could be saving $20, which they can then pass immediately on to you and I. But Freeland doesn't want to do that because that would mean that they would never be able to put the, because that would actually make improvement. And then you would see the improvement. And then the second that they tried to unpause it, you and I would lose our minds. One of the reporters cornered her on how the checks being mailed out in March are a little bit over the top and how it's coming at a bad time. And she just didn't have anything left in her. She was spent. She was not ex used to having, because she doesn't have any imagination. So she's not used to being pushed back on. And, you know, she can only tap the table so much. And I think her patience just ran out. And she just basically blurts it out. So here it is. You can hear it for yourself. Fact that the Canadian economy right now, over the holiday period, is in a place where demand is weak, consumer demand is weak, and there's excess supply and excess capacity, support demand in this very specific period. So that's what I was specifically referring to. So the checks had nothing. It was just a bit of there's a disconnect there between kind of what you're saying. I, 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 I was referring to the specific impact on consumer demand of the GST rebate. So there you have it. It's not about you. It's about trying to save those businesses that are right now claiming bankruptcy because there's excess supply and there's no demand. So what are they doing? They're selling it at a discount. They're selling it at a barely break even kind of money, even if they can, some of them are just getting desperate enough to break even. And then they'll turn around and claim bankruptcy and they'll spend 150 bucks and they'll register a new business under a new name and they'll try to start the process all over again. Meanwhile, in the middle, all of that insurance and all of those economies will collapse. Malls will stop getting rent. And they know this. They know that their economic policies have destroyed the middle class and it's about to be plain for everyone to see. So that's really what this decision is about. That's why they're not going after stopping the carbon tax. They're just trying to desperately get you to go shopping. They made some comments about what the restaurants are up to and how the restaurants don't want you to this and that. Who can afford to go shopping at a restaurant? Who has that kind of, I mean, restaurants are kind of expensive with the uh, situation in the economy. People are not, they don't have any money and the liberal government just doesn't seem to understand that, right? They just don't seem to get that they've been robbing from Peter to pay Paul since before COVID and now the chickens have come home to roost. There's just nothing left, there's nothing left in the tank to steal a, a poor pun, which is apropos in this particular subject. They don't understand that. They don't understand that really what they should have done is stop making everything so expensive on the other end. Not telling you that they're going to save save you five percent at the at the till. It's that that implies that you have the money to spend at the till, which they can't grasp that you don't. In their mind, you're just secretly not spending it. You don't. You're not in the mood, right? It's, you don't have the right vibe to go shopping. It's not that you're you know you haven't done your nails or cut your hair or bought anything new pair of pants for yourself and you can't even remember how long. No, it's all about your vibe. This is the finance and deputy minister of Canada talking like a 14 year old girl who has absolutely no idea what it, it, how the economy works or even what the word means. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I will talk to you next time.